Jack, it is so fantastic to talk to you today with all of the work that you've been doing at RIT um, and Rochester Institute of Technology uh, and with us here at the Linux Foundation, with the Open3D Foundation, and the Open3D Engine. Um, could you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you? Yep, so I'm Jack Kalina. I am a senior at RIT, finishing up my bachelor's in game design and development. I'm currently the project manager, uh, one of the programmers, and I handle the VFX for State of Matter, our game we're making for Project Eureka. So let's step back just a little bit. And can you tell us about your journey into game development? So it, you're at RIT now, but how did you get to where you are today? I've always sort of known I wanted to go into something software related, and I've been playing video games my whole life, love video games, been, probably since I was like two or three years old. I'd play with my dad, like it's always been a thing. Oh, cool. And then yeah. I, I've always also really been into like film and movies and storytelling, and I saw game design as a nice way to sort of blend that wanting to work in software and development with that sort of like love of storytelling and uh, like art, because I'm very much not an art person, but I like contributing to that sort of thing. So I found it as a nice blend of the two. Plus, me having played video games constantly forever just felt like a good thing to be involved in for myself. I realized pretty quick that you know the the software side, the programming side, is probably what I'm leaning closer towards. But also through the last couple of years, mainly through uh, like outside. Uh, like extracurricular stuff, I've I've found a sort of niche in that I'm pretty good with the project management and production and like uh, like management stuff. So I've I've found that's also sort of what I can excel in a little bit, besides from the programming. And it's sort of ended up being a lot of what I've done for Project Eureka. So I've gotten a lot of good experience with that. So what languages are your favorite? You talking about software programming? So a lot of the early classes for the game design major here are done in C-sharp because a lot of it's working with Unity or Monogame. So C-sharp is sort of what I started with with game development, so it's got a fond place in my heart, but through later classes and especially working with O3DE and with other engines, I've found that I do enjoy C++ quite a good bit. I, the more like control I have over what's going on, the better I feel like I can write the code. Like when I'm working with JavaScript, like I'm, I'm good with it, but the amount that's sort of like, like just base JavaScript, the amount that it does for you, I don't like. I like hard setting everything exactly how I need it to be. I, I'm starting to lean closer to C++ over C Sharp now. And it does, because it's a lower level programming language, it does give you more of that control that you're talking about. When you think about a career in game development, um, what are some of your dreams, your goals, your aspirations? I just love to get into it, really. I mean, it's a very tough industry to get into. So that's kind of the dream is just I get in however I get in. I'd love to be working in, you know, gameplay programming or uh, like something along those lines in software development. But I'd also be very happy doing some sort of like production role or like like the task management production sort of role. So let's let's dive into Project Rika for a little bit. So can you talk to us more about uh, what your role was there and, and maybe some of the decisions um, that, that you found yourself needing to make along the way? Yeah, like I wanted to see what it was like doing that sort of production side of stuff in a game environment. And we were doing a class where essentially the classes, you just make a game for a semester as a team and you all get different disciplines and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, I'll, I'll do it. I'll try it out. I want to see what it's like. So... In class, it was very much like, you know, this is just what we're doing for this week. This is what we're doing for next week. It was very simple. And then once we transitioned into doing it full time for Project Eureka and making a much bigger scale game, it quickly became a lot different where it went from, you know, it's this is what we're doing this week. It's like, okay, this is what we're doing now. This is what we want to be doing in three months. Like, this is what we're going to need to do to make sure we're on track. So it was a lot of it was, it was a hard shift really fast that I had to adjust to, but I think at this point I've really gotten the hang of it. 
and a lot of it was just making sure like regular communication with the team making sure sort of everyone knows where everyone's at if people are blocked by people you know what can we do to speed things up or get things done to make sure no one's getting blocked and everyone's getting their stuff done on time so we're hitting all the deadlines we need to hit being the sort of like I don't want to say mean one, but like, you know, let's say we want to add in all this stuff, be like, listen, we've only got X amount of time. Is this feasible? Like, I, it would be cool to have all this stuff in the game, but like, is it feasible to get it in by this date? You know, yeah, yeah, there's some sacrifices you make along the way, right? In terms yeah. of the, the, the need to have versus want to have versus what can we do, not do within the time frame allocated uh, to the project. And then, as you said, the nuances in how do you communicate that to your other teammates, keeping them on track yet, you know, um, doing it in a, in a, um, in a thoughtful way. Yeah. And I mean, luckily for, yeah. like for us, we've been working together since January on this game, essentially. So it's not like I had to be like, no, this is a bad idea. We're not doing this. And it would cause a fight. It was more like, like, this is, this is just not good. Like, we can't do this. Like, think about it. Like, it's not going to work. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. Or and it, sometimes it wasn't even me. It was like someone else would call it and like, you're out of your mind. Like, there's no shot we're going to get this done. And then I'd look back and I'm like, no, yeah, you're completely right. There's no shot this is getting in the game. <laughs> so, like, even though it was my role, it was I, I still want to, you know, shout out everyone else because it was super collaborative the whole time. And, you know, while I was making the cards and setting the due dates, it was all very collaborative in terms of, you know, making decisions. It's a careful balance, but it's always a nice thing to, to, um, to bring teammates along with you and for them to understand uh, too, so that they've got uh, buy-in, if you will, right into the process and the timeline and, and all of that. So that's, that's is um, fantastic experience that you will carry with you for many, many years to come. Uh, I'm, I'm sure of it, but um yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about um, what your personal goals were in relation to Project Eureka? Yeah. So my, my personal goals were to obviously get that experience doing the project management and production side on this bigger full-time multiple months, like published product scale. And then also to have that sort of, you know, I've got a published game under my belt. Like when I'm applying to jobs, I can say, this is on Steam. You can see this, you can buy it, like you can play it. This is a game I was involved in. So, I mean, my main goal was to have that sort of like finished product that I'm proud of, that I can show off. That The ability to be able to show your work, your body of work to potential employers is so important. What is your thought around open source or working through open source, uh, being able to do that? Because that is one of the benefits is that your work is in the open and it is, you know, being seen by folks and you are interacting with uh, others in the industry. Um, what was your experience uh, like working with the, um, the O3DE community? I thought it was actually pretty great because at the start, especially as we're, you know, jumping from Unity where there's years upon years of people who have done everything under the sun and we can find some answer to whatever issue we're having on Stack Overflow. O3DE is a lot younger and doesn't have nearly as much use as I think it should right now. So being able, our, our sort of main, you know, what are we doing here? What do we have to do? It was go to the community and be like, hey, has everyone, anyone seen this? Does anyone know how this system works? Does anyone know how this like should be implemented? And then, you know, like, either someone had done it or they're like, ah, this like might work, give it a shot. And then we'll give it a shot. And it was all like, especially towards the start, super collaborative because it was a lot of us figuring out how the engine worked. So we had to, we sort of got a lot of help from the community, which was really, really great. And in terms of working open source, one of the like very nice parts about that was, you know, if we're looking with, with like unity, if there's a, some feature we need with the engine, but don't have kind of just out of luck. Where with O3DE, there have been a couple times where like we'll encounter an engine bug or there's like a feature we want in the engine that isn't there. And then one of us, usually AJ, will just sit down, crank it out, 
make it and then we have it and then usually it ends up being part of the engine for everyone else to use anyway so it was it was super cool working in an open source environment like that where we're able to actively work on what we're using when we need to and then also other people can utilize what we've done so it's very very cool experience as opposed to working with something closed source you can actually point to hey i developed this i contributed this to this community and they'll be able to see the code that you wrote and and the contributions that you made um and and let me just say that you know thank you for contributing to the engine it is in its early days right um but uh, it's getting better better uh, uh, you know all the time by folks like you right who um, are contributing to the engine so we we absolutely appreciate um, all of what you've uh, what you've contributed to the engine uh, along yeah. your path as well i, I do yeah. want to say a lot of those contributions were aj not me specifically so i do want to say big <laughs> shout out to him a lot of that was him so oh excellent so thank you aj for thank you aj it's... for helping us on the engine <laughs> fixing it up yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 excellent. Oh, so um, you mentioned that you really appreciate and like working in or with C plus plus. Can you talk about your experience in working with C plus plus as it relates to O three D E? So, my my only experience with C plus plus prior to starting work in O three D E was through a couple classes where it was mainly just like hard straight C++ pretty much where like we what we weren't using it with like unreal or anything it was just like i think we used might have been opengl to do like graphics programming mm -hmm. and like learning how C++ works and like different data structures but really that was it so getting to sort of utilize it in the framework of an engine was super educational for me at least and figuring out how to use it to interact with all the different parts of the engine but I mean, in terms of using it with O3DE, O3DE has a lot of super useful stuff that like there's a bit of a learning curve to figure it out. But once you've got it locked in, it is so, so, so useful. Like all the different, the, the super modularity of it and the eBus system is like, that was one of our things at first where we were like, how do we use this? But then as soon as it, we figured it out, we were like, this is excellent like we we're gonna use we we're using it so much now so it, it was definitely super at least for me educational in terms of using it in like an engine game development environment as opposed to just like learning the engine itself or learning the language itself yeah so, so like c plus plus in application yes so yeah yeah applied real world oh that's fantastic so what um what were some of the challenges that you experienced along the way but at the start, there is definitely a learning curve for using the engine, especially because it's a little bit on the younger side. There's not necessarily a ton of examples or tutorials or documentation out there to use the engine. So for us at the start, the first sort of few weeks to a month, we're really just like, we got to figure out how, the, like while we were porting the game over from Unity, it was a lot of just like, how does, like, how do we even do this? How does, you know, how do we get this ported over? How do we use these systems? How does it work? But like uh, after that sort of initial learning curve besides like random bugs that you know since it was open source we were usually able to fix or someone else was able to fix that was really it like the biggest obstacle or challenge for me really was just that initial learning curve and then once you sort of get over that hill it's with the exception of a random bug pretty fine pretty good so on the flip side of that what did you find most rewarding about working uh, in Project Eureka? I think really just being able to make a game that's like a solid, publishable, like releasable product is the most rewarding part. Like a lot of what I enjoy about game development is as opposed to like other bits of software engineering, when you're working on games, you make something and then it's there and it's like in a world and it's like, it, it exists. It exists, essentially. So that's sort of a lot of what I really like about game design. And then being able to do that on such a large scale and 
having the opportunity to make this game into from like the little vertical slice we had in May into this solid finished product. That's been super, super rewarding, being able to see it go from start to finish and keep growing and becoming more polished and finished and having this really, I think, pretty solid product at the end. Really cool. So I just got to ask then, your game will be, and, and the Plutonite team, your game will be the first commercial game published uh, using O3DE. What does that mean to you and and to the team? It's definitely something we've been pretty like I guess proud of from the start is that like we have the opportunity to take this engine that no one has published anything in yet and be the first ones to do it because it's always cool to be the first people to do something. Like it's always a nice little flex. So it's definitely yeah. It's been it's been a cool thing that we've kept in our minds that we're sort of the first people, not necessarily the first people to make something in the engine, but the first people to have like a released published product in it. It's it's definitely a really cool thing that we're able to say in relation to the game. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, we think it's pretty cool. So we again we want to thank you and the rest of the team for you know, really taking the, this journey in O3DE. Um, and we are absolutely super excited about uh, the, the release of your game and, and uh, really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Were there any surprises you had along the way? I th- yeah. So and I think the biggest like surprises were sort of getting to experience game development from like a business side for the first time and like learning all the different things. Right. So like before everything was just, you know, making a game for class or making a project for class. So it's all just educational licenses. We're not releasing. It doesn't matter. But now that we're making like a published product, we want to sell having to like go through license, like licenses and figure out like what we need to have to like meet each requirement. Like, do we need to pay royalties for this? Like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of that, fell onto me because I was doing the production and project management side. So finding out like all that nitty gritty stuff that goes into publishing a product wasn't, I guess not necessarily surprising, but it was something I hadn't done before. So getting that experience was definitely big for me at least. And knowing like what I need to look for, for releasing stuff in the future and learning about all those different aspects. Like it was surprising how much I didn't realize went into releasing a game like i kind of just thought it was like you know if you're using something they got to be either credited or paid and then you do whatever steam wants you to do and that's it but there's you know obviously 18 million different layers i wouldn't have ever experienced without this you know (laughs) experience so you know getting to see all that and work with all that and figure all that out was super super educational it's great to hear from you and the rest of the members of the team to see, okay, where do we need to work? What should we prioritize? You know, what what needs to be flushed out in the engine? Um, what, uh, you know, are there any bugs that need to be fixed? Are there new features we could be um, bringing forth? Well, it sounds like you have gained a lot of education through the process. So have we on this end. So it's it's um, it's been rewarding for us as well. When you think about your body of experience in game development, um, what are, uh, you know, a couple of pieces of advice that you would give others? I guess my, my biggest piece of advice is just keep making stuff. And that's been told to me pretty much since I came to college was just like, if you got an idea, just make it. And it doesn't matter if it's bad, just make it and finish it. And then you have, even if it's bad, you still made something that's, been told to me since I came to school and started doing game design and really that like this was sort of the first time where it's been like all right we have an idea which luckily for us wasn't a bad idea but we had an idea and we you know finished it and we saw it to the end and now we've got this this product that we can actually publish so I I think that's my biggest piece of advice is just when you if you got an idea and you've got some time make a game 
make your little passion project. Even if it's bad, it's still something to show off. And I've, I've heard that from professors. I've heard that from, you know, random people from the industry who came and gave a talk or something, but that's really the one piece that's sort of stuck with me. And you learn a lot even through doing that, right? Um, yeah. And, just and through making there. stuff, like you have something yeah. cool to show off, but through adding in whatever or working in whatever engine you gain experience, that's really valuable. Yeah. Yeah. So Jack, as, as you look forward, um, we we're on the cusp of your game, uh, new being wrapped up and released and, and, um, and published. Um, so what's next and what, what possibilities are most exciting to you? What's next for me is finishing up school and graduating. I got one more semester left. So at this point, once the game is done, it's just studying and getting it done for one more semester and then I'm done. And then ideally landing a position in the industry after I graduate, that's my dream. That's my goal. So if I can manage that, I'll be super happy. And that that's sort of what I'm looking forward to trying to do. Yay. And we're so excited for you, truly. Um, so let's circle back to something that you said at the very beginning, and that is you, you love games. Uh, it sounds like you grew up with you and your father. That was really a, a, an opportunity for you uh, two to come together, to bond through uh, the love of, of games. What is your favorite game or your couple of favorite games um, that, that you'd like to share with us? I think my favorite game of all time is probably Chrono Trigger, which, yeah, I, I, I think I first played it in high school because one of my teachers recommended it to me. And I was like, wow, this is this is excellent. This is really good. And I, I think I've replayed it a good few times. I think I actually wrote a paper about it freshman year. So I think that's probably my favorite game of all time. That or Lego Star Wars, the complete saga. Oh, no, I don't think sweet. doesn't necessarily have good a story as Chrono Trigger, but there's just something about it that, you know, scratches that little kid itch and like it makes me feel like a little kid again i can just sit down and play it and whack a little toy lightsaber around well i i want to thank you jack so much for being with us today for sharing really your journey into game development um what it was like to be a part of project eureka uh, you know and 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 what's next for you so thank you so so much for for your time and for your energy yeah, thanks for having me. And thank you and thank Foundation for the opportunity of doing this and allowing us to get all this experience and grow and get this published game out.